I'm Joe Barrington. I'm bringing to you my top 10 greatest matches that I've commentated on on the PSA World Tour for the men over the last 11 years. I've commentated on thousands and thousands of wonderful matches and it's been really, really difficult for me to narrow it down to just 10. I've gone backwards and forwards, but now I've got my confirmed list, so I'm going to go for it. At number 10, the Tournament of Champions semi-finals between Mohamed El Shabagi and Gregory Gaultier back in 2017. Gregory Gaultier led two games to love. He was playing sublime squash at the time. Shabagi was world number one and favourite for the match. And then a, contra a very controversial scenario happened with a double bounce that was picked up in the third game by Shabagi. This then uh, completely and utterly knocked the confidence and also the concentration factor of the French general. He pretty much went bonkers. The two games came back now from Shabagi into a fifth and then the mid-stage of the fifth, the celebrations from Gregory Gaultier are something I've never seen in my life. It was unbelievable up against the front wall. He was slightly injured, he was, he was limping around, really trying it on and managed to outmanoeuvre Mohamed El Shabagi mentally and hold off the beast to actually win in five games. The backstory to this is that they had a humdinger in El Guna the previous season before in the final, where Gaultier thought he was hard done by by some gamesmanship by uh, Mohamed El Shabagi, and he got his revenge. And it was uh, it was very entertaining. At times, the squash wasn't necessarily the greatest squash, but the entertainment factor of the whole match was absolutely sublime. So that's number ten. It's good pressure here. Oh my. Oh, look at the reactions. He's got it. Not out. Not no, out. No, no, no. Not out. Missed. He's got to appeal this. Oh, you thought he got it. I thought he the, got it. Pick up video referee, please. The drama in the, continues. In the back right hand corner. To Maggie. me, he looks like a double. The pick up was good, therefore, it's wow. yes let. No, the pick up was down. Well, Gaultier has gone ballistic. Stop, that ball hit down. the floor. Calm down That's and amazing. listen. Calm down. Gaultier Clearly cannot the believe the this. I mean, the referee has called the ball good. Therefore, we go back and play yes let. Eight seven. He's got it. Right PJ, outside. he's got and it. And conduct warning for he's ball abuse. He's got it. Oh, Shabagi just wanting to inflict more pain. Oh dear, oh dear. 11-4, game to Shobagi. I think he's probably going to shake his Two hand. Two games all. Can't see. Yeah, he's going to shake his hand. This is terrible. Gregory Gutierrez. <laughs> Body's broken down on it. He looks at Shobagi. Shakes his head to his entourage. I think he's going to shake his hand. He's not. He's fighting on <laughs> the French general. He's now lunging and splitting. Tail's starting to get up, although he's wincing. I mean, oh, oh dear, oh goodness dear. me. That's borderline dangerous play there from Gaultier. No, no. Gregory Gaultier. <laughs> this is like an opera. This is like a theatre. It's been, look at that. Well, he won't get done for a decent exposure, but uh, <laughs> I mean that is just unbelievable. He's playing the crowd here. This is very tough mentally for El Shabagi. Five all. What a hustle! Oh, this stop-start pattern of the fifth game, Joey. You can't help but feel that it's favoured. Gregory Gaultier. It's a clever width. Well, Shabagi is motoring around. What a rally! Shabagi cannot believe it. Gregory Gaultier is conducting the crowd with some hip thrusting. Mohamed El Shabagi, I think Gaultier is going to chance his arm, given half a chance. Well, he went for it, PJ. You called it. Shabagi appeals, feeling that that hit the top of the tin. Oh, he's done it! He's completely and utterly hustled Mohamed El Shabagi. He's used all the tricks in the book, Gregory Gaultier. 
That is a celebration. He needs to get off court quickly because that chandelier might fall down on him. Number nine for me, James Wallstrop up against Gregory Gautier in the PSA Masters in India back in 2011. Nick Matthew was out injured. There was a real opportunity for Wallstrop to take the world number one spot for the first time in his career. And what I've witnessed commentating in that match was something quite extraordinary. It's the longest singular game I've ever seen at that level on the PSA World Tour. The first game, Gaultier ended up winning it, I think, 21-19, and it was 58 minutes in duration, just for one game. And you'd have expected after that that Gaultier would then go through and win after making it so brutally physical, but it actually went the other way. James Wallstrop showed his mental focus and tenacity and his court craft. He broke Gaultier. He then won the second game to reach one all and ran away with it three games to one. I mean, that performance to then take him to world number one was, uh, was quite mesmerising. And again, I've never witnessed such amazing physicality and mental focus and quality within one singular game like I did in that first. So number nine, Will Strop's win over Gaultier in India. Welcome to the PSA World Tour. I'm your host, Joe Barrington. The first half of the year has been dominated by Nick Matthew and the mercurial Ramia Shaw. But during the second part, the tide has changed dramatically. James Wallstrop and Gregory Gaultier have been exchanging perpetual battle-hardened blows. It is now the last of these brutal World Series encounters. We are live from the heart of India on neutral territory at the well eclipsed Siri Fort Complex, New Delhi, for the Punj Lloyd PSA Masters 2011. Strop's got it. Brilliant from Gaultier. Oh, Franny there by both players. Gregory Gaultier using such soft hands at the front of the court. Well, I can't actually believe that Wilstrop got the volley back, but what a touch there from Gaultier. 15-14. Brilliant from the Frenchman. Oh, there Whoa. it is, Gregory Gaultier explodes from nowhere onto a boast to put in that forehand straight drop. Game to Gaultier, 21-19. Gaultier leads. Somehow game Gaultier. to love. He's really struggling to put one foot in front of the other at the moment. Well, it looks Six like one. he is going to concede, Lee. That's it. Gaultier. And he's conceded. Gregory Gaultier concedes. Unfortunately, he's broken down. Will Stott wins by three games to one. Very well conditioned. Body 19 of the 21. Not responding. 11 8, 11 4. James Six Will Stott. One. What a victory. This means. Well, I can't express what it means. He's on all fours on the floor. James Will Stott has made history here. He has become the fourth Englishman to become world number one in the January the first rankings. The Frenchman gave 110% but just could not carry on. Number eight has got to be the classic between Nick Matthew and Rami Ashore. This was back in 2009. It was the pilot launch for Squash TV, so it was a really important time for, for the sport. But it was crucial for these two players because, again, they were battling for the world number one spot all the way to the final, and it was a five-game thriller. Nick Matthew doing his usual of coming back from behind time and time again, pressing and pressing Rami Ashore. It was 110 minutes in duration. It was the longest match Rami Shaw never had in his career to date. So it went to, it goes to show the quality of the performance from Nick Matthew, but uh, definitely a, a terrific battle. And that goes in at number eight for me. Joining us here in the Saudi International 2009. Got a fantastic uh, finale coming up in this final. 
between Rami Ashour of Egypt and Nick Matthew of England. The winner of this tournament and match will head the January the 1st rankings in 2009. And yeah, he's really improved on the lob. He's using the lob to great effect uh, these days. Showing that you can turn defence into attack. Oh, this is unbelievable. Oh, it's all happening here. It's all happening. It's a quick racket. <laughs> it's like welcome to the X-Men. Yeah. Oh, great oh, shot from Nick. Fantastic squash. See the fist came up. There was a massive rally and there was a lot of movement involved here and that's a lovely Ten, finish. Seven. Great finish. Game ball. This is, oh, that's oh, fantastic. That's fantastic. Well, I wanted to <laughs> applaud that myself, actually. <laughs> well, that really was amazing retrieving here by Rami after a slip and then and a dive, and then that's great touch. What a great, <laughs> great clip there. between Nick Matthew. What a fantastic final there, and you can see the respect. A smile there from Nick. Very gracious in defeat. Very gracious in defeat. Ramia Shaw kissing the floor. We're now looking at the new world number one. The January the first rankings. The 2009 Saudi International Champion and on the 1st of January, the new world number one, Rami Ashour! Number seven has got to be the British Open final back in 2018 between Rodriguez, the Colombian cannibal, and Shabagi, the beast. Shabagi having won the British Open previously, and it was the biggest title that Rodriguez had ever won in his career, but it was the historical factor. The British Open final was packed to the rafters. It, was, it reminded me of one of the, the classic finals that you would read about and could possibly see back in the day with Jeff Hunt and Jonah Barrington, going all the way to five games. Rodriguez was a serious underdog with his ranking, although Shibagi was not 100% physically, but he did not push and push and push. And the drama that continued in the fifth game was second to none. It was very, very exciting. And it was fantastic for the sport to have someone that uh, is Colombian, South American, winning one of the most, or the most prestigious title on the PSA World Tour. I even think that Rodriguez got to meet the Colombian president. This is an excellent rally for the Cannonball. And there, the, oh, wow. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, yes. Get <laughs> <laughs> oh, the crowd going. That, that lady, lady can't believe, can't it. believe it. <laughs> she nearly threw a drink over her husband. I think she was saying what happened. Look at this dive recovery. He gets wow. back up, and then the get here. Shibagi cannot believe it. It's well, he didn't brilliant. think he was going to go over the 10, did he? Oh. The second one. Thank the you. dive here. Look at this. How <laughs> on earth did he get that back? <laughs> and then the dexterity to play a, a reverse angle. How does he do it? <laughs> well, I, I think Mohamed Al Shibagi is in a lot of pain. It's quite evident. Uh, the, the guts that he's showing is outrageous. Absolutely yeah, it is. outrageous. It's hurting, hurting. Oh. He's made the error. He's made the error, Rodriguez. He's got to concentrate here. 
the Shabaggies. In a world of pain, but he's also very, very clever. There's no doubting that he's running on fumes, Shabaggy, but he's kind of make it quite evident on there. time in this match. Rodriguez was way out of position. Shivagi stuck the arm out eight. and hit the tin. He's gone for the boast. So fearless Shibagi at match championship ball down. Oh, what a straighten from Rodriguez. Still moving so well, the Colombian. Doesn't seem to be any fatigue in his body. Well, he's appealed that. He's, he's given yeah. it. Rodriguez oh has done gosh. it! Rodriguez has done it! I can't believe it! He's made history. Here at the finish over the Colombian cannonball. He's going to be down in the history books. The first South American ever to win the British Open. Marvin El Shabagi played an epic battle. I mean, the courage of Shabagi. And look at this, it's fantastic from El Shabagi. Sweet moments. History has been made once again at the British Open and it's going to Colombia. Number six for me has got to be the Qatar World Championship Finals back in 2012 between Mohamed El Shabagi and Rami Ashour. This was going to be first of many great battles between these two titans of the game. Rami Ashour, the elder st statesman, leading by two games to one. Shabagi fighting back to take it into the fifth game. The longevity of the match, the, the duration was very, very long. It was hugely intense and dramatic. There was a, a big Egyptian fraternity in the crowd there supporting both players that created a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere in Doha. And Rami Ashour managed to hold off the young Shabagi just at the very end, 11-8 in the fifth. So a really terrific battle. And that's number six. I don't know how he gets those lobs cross court from the ball when it's so tight to the side ball. Oh, that's brilliant. Well, will we see a massive sprint towards the possible finish line here from a short? And that is El Shabagi's quirky shot that he hasn't played for a few rounds but what a time to play it well here we go this is like something out of a comic book People in the crowd jumping out of their seats. PJ's ended up on my lap. <laughs> well, where do we start on this one, PJ? How many shots do you want to talk about? Amazing squash. We well, had an opportunity to review there, Remy Short. I just wonder if that may come back to haunt him. Down. And he's done it. Rami Ashour has World become the 2012 
three games to two. Qatar PSA world champion. What a final between these two Egyptians. They really are now the dominant superpower of world squash. And what a magnificent effort from Mohamed El Shabagi. Number five, the World Tour Finals back in 2011. It was at the Queen's Club in London and it marked a really special occasion. Amar Shabana taking on Gregory Gaultier. Another brilliant battle between these two. It really stood out for me though, the, the fighting capabilities of Gregory Gaultier. Renowned for being a great front runner, he came back from behind, he made it so hard physically and mentally for Shabana and it drew out the best of Shibana in terms of his skill set and his tactical abilities, the way he was able to outmaneuver the French general in the end, hence the nickname the Maestro, winning his first major title on UK soil on the PSA World Tour. A terrific, terrific encounter, five game thriller. So at number five, Shibana's win in London. Well, he's one of the real characters of the game. Gregory Gautier, former world number one in 2009. He's now number three. Amma Shabano is the four times world champion. The former world number one is now at number eight. The maestro has 27 career titles to his name. Now, these two players have met 22 times before with the Egyptian leading that head-to-head -head 10 to 12. Oh, that is improvisation at its finest, PJ. He's so open to the front wall. Look and at the dexterity in his hand two. as he produces that. Oh, what a oh, finish. Superb squash by the maestro. Held on to the very end in this second game. Oh. This is unbelievable. Oh, look at that! Gaultier throws his racket, but the cross court from Shabana. So low. I can't believe it. He's got it. Oh my lord, this is unbelievable. Oh. And he's made the error. Gaultier doesn't know what to do there. Omar Shaban is moving around the court like a 19 year old. <laughs> well, two dives in this rally here from Omar Shaban. There's the first off of the cross court. Gaultier dropping across the court at the front again. And in the end, it was the intimidation factor. Knowing that Shabana was breathing down his neck there, the Frenchman just clipping the top of the tin. Oh, well, the Maestro's done it! Other Shabana has won his first major championship on English soil. What a performance! by this legend of the modern game. Standing ovation for Omar Shabana. Number four, again, it's the maestro, Omar Shabana, taking on Nick Matthew. It was the semi-finals of the Tournament of Champions back in 2014. Shabana had been written off massively by so many people. He dropped his ranking close to being outside the top 10 at the time. He came out of nowhere and produced the squash that took him to world number one and winning multiple 
World Championships. Nick Matthew, always one of these players that draws the best out of the top players because Matthew's consistency and his tenacity and his ability to fight always. And Shabana responded quite amazingly. It was the age of Shabana, the fact that he was written off, but the quality, the quality of the squash from both these guys was uh, some of the highest order I've ever seen. And it went all the way to the wire. Shabana managing to squeeze out 11-8 in the fifth. And he was so excited, it was quite funny. He ended up running up the front wall. He was like a free runner. Um, so he went on to win that event. That was the last major event that Shibana won. But he stunned the squash world with such a great victory and such a great win overall in the tournament. So number four, Shibana's win in TOC. I'm going to go for a 3-1 victory for Nick Matthew. I just don't feel that Shibana's quite got the physicality to trouble the Englishman long enough. Still gets the ball back. Oh, that is superb from Mama Shabana. Absolutely wicked. Sorry, BJ. I've just blown your head off. He just reattached it back onto his shoulders. But check this out. That's what I'm talking about. Doing a great job of neutralising Nick Matthew. Oh, he's got him. He's done it. And there, <laughs> another cheeky fist bump from the maestro. He's gaining in testosterone as the match goes on. Oh. So much skill to play these shots with the height deep. That's something they've both, uh, sorry, both done well this evening, Joey. When they're under pressure at the back, they've straightened up very well. Oh, well done. There's another fist pam. That the fifth fist pump, he's run through this again. Got the width past Matthew's wingspan. Oh, oh he's made the error of a Shabana! He's got on the front wall like an absolute maniac there. Unbelievable! Absolutely brilliant. Nicholas Matthew, dignified in defeat. He comes back, we'll see this rally again, we'll see it, but this is a reaction. He went up the front wall, watch this, he comes up. <laughs> That's outrageous. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Now we're getting into the real money shots. And number three coming up for you is the battle of the Egyptians once again. This time, Mohamed Al Shabagi taking on Rami Ashour. It was the El Guna International back in 2015. They'd had some unbelievable battles coming up to this one, but it was in this battle that things really, really kicked off for me. Rami Ashour was two love up, absolutely killing Mohamed Al Shabagi with just brilliant maverick like squash, as he always does when he was fit. But then Shabagi came back, Shabagi fought and fought and fought, got back into the fifth game and pressed on. And it was Rami Ashour that responded. A second time, it was uh, it was just like one of those epic heavyweight boxing matches where they're just back and forth, back and forth, all the way to the limit. Rami Ashour saved four championship balls to end up winning that title. And ironically, that really was the last major, major title that Rami Ashour won. After that, he got played once again by these horrible injury syndrome, but it was brilliant. It was in Egypt and it was these two players battling it out. So number three, Rami Ashour taking on the beast in El Guna. This is the PSA World Tour. We finally arrived into the heat of the Middle East, this wonderful resort here in El Guna. All the world's best players have descended upon this resort for what should be a perfect setting for tonight's final. It's the Alguna International 2015. Oh my goodness me, he's won the rally. He's had some fortune there. He waited too long here, he Mohamed Shabagi. Exactly, front, right hand, front left hand corner, Shabagi waited. There's the dive, he's off balance. He's got to accelerate and put the shot in. And out. 
I mean, that happened at Five real time. Four. Same thing happened in Qatar, Joey, didn't it? From 10-5 when it looked done and dusted. Well, it's game ball now for Shabagi to take this into a fifth game. Three points in a row. He's done it. Mohamed El Shabagi has closed out the fourth game. Well, ten. Game to El Shabagi. Two games what all. A thriller here in El Guna. You couldn't write it. Well, that was Ramir Shaw at his very best. The change of pace down the left-hand side wall, slightly loose from El Shabagi, but Six, then this seven. The backhand cross-court volley, Nick. Absolutely perfect. Still championship ball for Hamid El Shabagi. Yeah. And there's the low kill from Rami Ashour. The crowd go absolutely mental as he manages to take this into an electric tie break. Here's a chance. And oh. it goes out of court. Rami Ashour has come back from the dead Man, once Rami again Ashour. to win a major <laughs> PSA title. Unbelievable. What a stunning final. 11 9, 11 6, 4 11, 10 12, 12 10. And that just about says it all. He had to dig deeper than he ever has before to come through this final, Rami Ashour. Well, Rami Ashour has collapsed onto the floor there. You can see the... I think he's kind of laughing and crying at the same time. Unbelievable. Completely and utterly stunned. Complete seesaw of drama. And there he is, you see his hands shaking. <laughs> Look at it, he could barely put his hands. <laughs> Once again, your Inter El Guna International 2015 champion is the one and only Rami Ashour. Number two, we're getting very, very close now. The Battle of the English back in 2010, the Canary Wharf Classic semi-finals between the great Nick Matthew, the Wolf taking on the great James Wolstrop, the Marksman. These guys, the rivalry was really developing. Matthew had the upper hand with James Wolstrop, but Wolstrop kept getting closer and closer. And it came to this scenario in London, the two of them playing in front of an amazing crowd at a terrific event. For me, it was uh, extra special. I happened to be commentating with my father for that semi-final, and it was beyond, beyond what we could ever have imagined. It was so impressive. It was over two hours of world-class squash, literally from the first service. The quality of squash produced by both those players from the first serve all the way through to what happened at the very, very end of the fifth game, which is something I've never seen and I haven't seen again. At 9-8 in the fifth game, there was a, an epic rally. Wilstrop ended up diving for a ball and getting a full body cramp. He had to concede to Nick Matthew. He could not carry on. Matthew got to 10-8, match ball to champion, uh, sorry, match ball to get to the final, it was the semis. He couldn't carry on James Wilstrop and he had to be carried off court. And you can imagine what that was like for somebody of uh, my father's ilk, seeing that squash in the modern era like it was with that quality. So at number two, Nick Matthews' unbelievable win over James Wallstrop in the semi-finals of Canary Wharf. Well, joining me on PSA Squash TV is the legend of the game, Jonah Barrington. Good evening, Jonah. And good evening to you, Joey. Well, it's great to have you with us, and you could hear from those uh, interviews by the two players that there is a frequent uh, occasion where they're coming up against each other in uh, in tournaments, and Nick Matthew getting the, the better of James Wilstrop at the moment, but uh, I can see that James is full of fire tonight and be looking to try and get a win on the, on the scoreboard. You can see the ball is a lot deader. 
And that has helped Nick Matthew on that beautifully weighted forehand straight drive. Gives him three game, game balls. Ball. Immediate return with the dying ball. It's not as, not as warm, capitalized. And there we go. Nick Matthew 11, takes the seven. first game, game here, 11 7. One game to love. Both players unafraid. Down. Oh, there we go. James Wilstrop takes a very crucial, gargantuan third game, 2018. I think we've got uh, half the crowd having to go for bathroom breaks. The players, <laughs> unfortunately, only have two minutes. They should deserve a 10 minute break after that 38 minutes in that third game oh. it's an outrageous recovery from Nick Matthew now he's on the attack oh, oh that's brilliant play there Nick Matthew really doing well to stay in the rally and then as soon as he had an opportunity seizing it nine, so he extends seven. his lead to 9-7 two point cushion here oh that is unbelievable play so Nick Matthew gets two match balls here and James Wallstrop in absolute agony in the floor there I don't know what's this looks happening. like a bad cramp, Joey. He really is on the floor cramping badly. It's all happening in this match. We've had absolutely everything. Nick Matthew playing a fantastic line. James Wilson diving and there. You can see he mm. can't continue. So Nick Matthew in an unfortunate way, but unbelievably relieved. He won't be happy with that, but he will be happy that he's come out a marathon battle between these two. James Wilstrop stumbling off the court not good to see and we, we were quite sure that james was really starting to feel it in that last period and then there was the unfortunate accident which we all saw numero uno number one this is number one and i've gone absolutely back and back and back and back but i'm going to go for this one because it, it was really fresh and still so fresh in my memory it won't be in pj's but it's certainly in mine uh, the 2014 World Championship Final in Qatar, Doha. Again, Mohamed El Shabagi taking on Rami Ashour. Now, in this particular final, the circumstances were unreal. Rami Ashour had come into the World Championships having six months off court completely, not even playing a PSA event. He came out of nowhere to get into this final against Mohamed El Shabagi. Shabagi was on the move at this point of his career. He was so dangerous and looking to dominate. And he pushed all the way. And I'll tell you what, Mohamed El Shabagi ended up saving five championship balls, five championship balls for Rami Shaw to then eventually take it in a tie break in the fifth game, just short of two hours. And it was electrifying, entertaining. Again, the atmosphere for that final was terrific in Doha with all the Egyptian fraternity supporting these two great players. And for myself and PJ, it was just a dream come true to be able to commentate on a match like that with the historical factor, with the fact that it was the World Championship, the biggest final of the season for all the players. And they produced the goods. I have to apologize for uh, Mohamed El Shabagi because he seems to be in this top 10, always the recipient. But again, like Nick Matthew, like these great players, he's one of these players that extracts the best out of his opponents. He always has done, always does. And I'm sure moving forward, if I'm to redo my top 10, there'll certainly be some Shabagi wins in there because he's got plenty more to come in his career. But fantastic. And I, I hope you've enjoyed this, this top 10. As I say, it's been very, very tough for me. I've tried to take it from different angles. Uh, of what the reverb, what the repercussions and what it did for the sport and how the sports move forward and, and what's been so different about the matches and the players and everything else. There's a lot that encompasses it, but I hope you've enjoyed it. That's what I've given uh, as my kind of top 10. And uh, there you go. Give credit to 
to El Shibagi here. He's keeping his focus and concentration. It's so difficult when you the opponent. There it is. El Shibagi takes the second game. Clenching that fist. His arm vibrating all over the place. Oh, well, it's a great shot. It's a wrong footing boast. Very good strength from El Shabagi. Actually playing it off the orthodox leg. He had to get it right because his movement was going backwards. Yeah, it's clever hitting. Very, very wide. The ball dying in the back corner. El Shabagi's hitting from the front of the court to the back has been so impressive. The hard movement there again. Premier Shaw really is putting a lot of physical distress into the legs oh, he's of done Shibagi. It. Oh, this is oh, what a rally! What a rally, PJ! Harry Ramram into the front right hand corner. Both players hitting behind their back. Ramya Shaw the first time. And then Hamid El Shabagi the second. Hand out. And that's a thanks for coming. Awesome squash. He's done it. Rami Ashur has taken the fourth game. 11 Quite brilliantly. He's done it. Rami Ashur has come back from the dead to steal this World Championship title. He is going absolutely bonkers. That was an epic battle, one of the most exciting finals ever on Squash TV, if not the most exciting final. Unbelievable. 5-11. His whole body has gone into a spasm. Rami Ashur. You could not ever predicted it it had every single element and now ladies and gentlemen the magic moment when we ask mr nabil ali ben ali please to make the presentation to the 2014 world champion you couldn't write it an epic 3-2 battle between these young egyptians ramia shaw is back in this game he's cementing himself in squash history winning the World Championships for the third time. Well, that's my best top 10. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of opinions and, and feedback, and that's what it's all about. I've enjoyed this immensely. I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. And join me again soon for another top 10.